But, you know, even more chilling is the way the Secret Service is trying to wriggle out of what looks like at the very best to be rank, gross incompetence of the worst sort. Check out the excuse Secret Service boss Kimberly Cheadle is trotting out for her agents and why there was no agent on that roof where the sniper took his shot. Should that roof have been secure, period? That building in particular has a, a sloped roof uh, at its highest point. Um, and so, you know, there's a safety factor that would be con considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof. Uh, and so, you know, the decision was made to secure the building uh, from inside. It was a safety factor, you know? It was a slope. There was a tilt. It was dangerous, too dangerous for these people who go and put their lives on the line. I mean, imagine this, a slope. What do we say? Sorry, kids, no present from Santa this year? The roof is on a slope? Hey, maybe this is why they designed the White House with a flat roof all those years ago. Because they knew down the road Secret Service agents who take an oath to put their bodies on the line wouldn't slip and hurt their ankles or something protecting the president. Of course, this doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make any sense because if you look at this, the snipers that were behind Trump and shot the shooter were on a sloped roof too. Put that back up on the screen so people can see it. Because seriously, what is going on here? Look, there's been more evidence that this has just been an incredible dereliction of duty come out of the last several hours. That the war on competence, on expertise, on people who know what they're doing has taken a new and frightening direction. CNN has reported new details on the attempted assassination, including that the, att the would-be assassin passed through a Secret Service checkpoint with a rangefinder, and apparently nothing was done about it. We also understand that when he got to the fairgrounds where this rally was being held for Donald Trump, the first thing that puts him on the radar of security people is near the magnetometer area where they're screening people in, he's carrying in his hand a rangefinder. It's a device that looks like a small pair of binoculars, but it's used by shooters to measure the distance when they're setting up a long distance shot. Uh, because he didn't have a weapon, that would not have prevented him to go, to go through security. Uh, but they did flag, what does he have this in his hand for? Um, at that point, they told people, keep an eye on this guy. But then he leaves the secure area, the staging area, and he doesn't turn up again for some time until uh, the crowd says there's a guy crawling up the roof and it appears he has a rifle. Great, great work there, guys. Well, hey, he's got a rangefinder. Nothing suspicious about that. I think we should just let him climb up on a roof near the president. And there's also this. And, you know, the physical damage that has been done, Trump's dinged-up ear and the really tragic loss of a retired firefighter in the crowd, well, that doesn't account for the political damage that has occurred. And, I mean, it's not hard to see how people really start to wonder if there is something more going on with this, especially when there seems to be no consequence for a horrendous series of errors. And for the moment, that's all we can call this.